It just happened when Bill Trailer started to draw by Don Tate, illustrated by R. Gregory Christie. It was early summer in Montgomery, Alabama, 1939. On downtown Monroe Avenue, an elderly man sat on a wooden crate with a board laid across his lap and the stub of a pencil grasped in his hand. He began to draw a picture on the back of a discarded laundry soap box. Who was this man? And what caused him to start drawing at the age of 85? His name was Bill Trailer, and if people had asked him, he might have said, it just come to be. Back in the 1850s, George Hartwell Taylor and his wife owned a cotton farm near Benton, Alabama. The Trailers also owned more than 20 slaves. Sometime during 1854, one of the enslaved families had a baby boy. He was given the name Bill. His last name became Trailer, the same as his master's. From the minute the sun lit the sky until it disappeared into the night, the slaves picked cotton in the hot, dusty fields. When Bill was old enough, he was put to work too, pulling weeds, fetching water, gathering wood. After he finished his chores, Bill sometimes met his friends at the bank of the Alabama River. They jumped into the cool water and waved at the steamboats passing by. Without realizing it, Bill saved up memories of these times deep inside himself. When the Civil War ended in 1865, the slaves were freed. Many people left their former masters, but Bill's family chose to stay on the trailer's land. They worked as sharecroppers, farming and sharing their crops and profits with the people who had once enslaved them. Even though the war was over, northern soldiers continued to burn many southern farms, villages, and towns. Young Bill and his family watched in horror as the trailer's farm, equipment, and animals were destroyed. Bill's family managed to survive unhurt. They rebuilt their home and continued to work the land for many years. Bill saved up memories of these times deep inside himself. By 1881, Bill was a grown man, a hard-working farmer. He married a young woman named Larissa, and they lived in a small cabin by a creek. Soon their home was filled with a brood of hungry children. Money was scarce. You could have that building over there full of money, Bill once said, but you couldn't eat it. So everyone, even the littlest child, worked on the farm to grow the food they needed to fill their empty bellies. Bill saved up memories of these times deep inside. Bill had many animals, including a mule, that helped him complete his chores. But sometimes that mule turned stubborn when Bill approached his plow. Minute he sees a plow, he starts swinging back. Gets that pride from his mama, Bill said, annoyed that the mule refused to work. The animals on the farm also amused Bill. He chuckled as he watched them go about their business. Chickens strutted in the yard with confidence. Cats tiptoed across rooftops with grace. Snakes slithered through brush, always up to no good. Some animals even had personalities that reminded Bill of people he knew. Bill saved up these memories deep inside. Come Saturday night, the men danced to the tune of a fiddle while the women sang up a storm. Children ran back and forth, snapping their fingers to the beat of the music. Even owls in the trees bobbed their heads to the music. After the festivities, the men took their dogs and went hunting and fishing until late into the night. The next day, Bill roasted sweet potatoes and whatever he had caught and served them up for dinner. Sunday morning, folks gathered alongside the riverbank. Under the shade of a tall trees, they formed a circle around the preacher and listened to his message in songs. With praises of joy, they clapped and raised their hands to the sky. Bill saved up these memories deep inside. Bill spent a lifetime on the trailer's land. By 1935, he was 81 years old, way up in age and all by himself. My white folks had died and my children scattered. 
Bill said. His wife died too. With the people he was close to gone, Bill had no reasons to stay on the farm. He packed his bag and headed to the nearby city of Montgomery. Finding a job in the city was not easy. Bill had never learned to read or write, and his work on the farm hadn't prepared him for the city life. Eventually, he found employment at a shoe factory, but Bill developed painful rheumatism in his joints. Before long, he was forced to quit his job. For a while, Bill sold pencils provided to him by the U.S. government. He didn't make much money, and he soon became homeless. During the day, he wandered through downtown Montgomery. It was an exciting place to be. People bustle along, going in and out of markets, shops, and restaurants. Automobiles and horse-drawn buggies rumbled through the streets. At night, Bill slept on sidewalks, in doorways, or in alleyways, until the owners of the Rose Clayton funeral home befriended him. They offered Bill a place to sleep in the storage room of their business. He piled a bundle of rags on top of a wooden pallet, and there, among the caskets, Bill rested his tired body. As he lay in the storage room at night, Bill was overcome with loneliness. He missed his family, his farm, his animals. Deep inside, he found all those saved-up memories of earlier times. Bill could not contain his memories. One day in early 1939, he picked up the stub of a pencil and a piece of discarded paper and began to pour out his memories and pictures. Bill's first drawings were simple items, cats, cups, shoes, baskets. Then he began to draw human and animal forms too. He used the side of a stick to rule straight lines and shapes. Rectangles became bodies, circles became heads and eyes. Lines became outstretched arms, hands, and legs. He filled in shapes with sketchy lines and smoothed out edges. The sidewalk of Monroe Avenue became Bill's art studio. A wooden crate was his artist bench. Scrap cardboard and old paper cartons were the canvases on which he drew his pictures. And the clang, clang, clang from the nearby blacksmith shop provided background music for Bill while he worked. Folks of all ages came to watch Bill work. One of his admirers taught Bill to write his name, and soon he was proudly signing his drawings. Bill often hung his pictures on a nearby fence. When passers-by asked questions about his drawings, Bill didn't mind. He could be quite talkative. But if Bill was focused on his work, he offered no conversation at all. On a summer morning in 1939, a young artist named Charles Shannon caught sight of Bill sitting on his crate, drawing. Charles was intrigued as he watched Bill's hands make its marks and fill them in. Bill's pictures danced with rhythm unlike any drawings Charles had seen. Charles began visiting Bill regularly and wanted to support his work. He brought Bill art supplies, colored pencils and paintbrushes, poster paints and high quality paper. But Bill liked to do things his own way. He used the colored pencils and some of the paints, but he continued to work on the backs of discarded bags, signs, and cardboard boxes. Bill's hands were steady and confident. He was not concerned about messing up, and he almost never erased. When painting, he favored a rich, spare palette of colors, deep blues, bright reds, sunny yellows, and earth browns. He used paint straight from the jar and rarely mixed colors together. Soon, Bill moved to a shady spot on North Lawrence Street. There, he continued to pour out his memories, often drawing until late in the day. He drew wide-eyed owls, a big red dog, and fighting cats. He sketched spotted snakes and hunters on horseback. Sometimes, Bill talked about his pictures. I wanted to be plowing so bad today, I drawed me a man plowing, he said. Bird on top of the basket, and he don't know it. Bill joked about one of his humorous pictures. Bill also drew the people he saw on the streets of Montgomery, men in tall hats and women in patterned dresses, folks walking dogs and a man with a crutch. He drew the blacksmith's shop and blacksmithing tools arranged in rows. When people paid him a few cents for one of his pictures, Bill was amused. 
Sometimes they buy them when they don't even need them, he remarked. Charles Shannon so admired Bill's work that he arranged for a show of Bill's drawings and paintings. The exhibit, Bill Trailer, People's Artist, was held at the New South Art Gallery on February 12, 1940. About 100 of Bill's works hung on the walls of the gallery. Bill moved slowly from picture to picture without saying much. Finally, he pointed his cane at one of the paintings and said, This old horse, he fat, but this poor old skinny mule here, he done work all his life. None of Bill's art sold that day, but that didn't bother Bill. Money was not the motivation behind his drawings. Bill drew pictures for himself to enjoy the saved up memories of his life. He didn't know his pictures would also bring enjoyment to others, but without realizing it, Bill Trailer shared his memories with the world.